Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Ah, yes. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. The show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Plaid Napkin. And across from me is my co-captain and your co-captain. His name is Captain Philip Rassisher. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Feeling feeling great. I'm, I'm a little... I'm, I had an injury. Um, and so it's starting, you know... Um, I didn't have time to take the ibuprofen. You're before, probably really feeling it now before this flight, and so now it's it's starting to it's starting to hit me. Um, I have trouble looking to the left and looking to the right of you of me. Yeah. So if there's poontane, I won't be able to notice oh, it. Oh boy. So yeah, you. Know, you I'll your, be your poontang looker. Okay. Um, you're gonna get it up and bring it down as I always do. Absolutely, right. and you'll do all the stuff in the middle. All the stuff in the middle, but I might ask you to like look around for me okay we're not off the ground yet okay flight wise sure. if you are able do you have a, a manual on you because if i need to look no, up something, all i have is the audible manual <sighs> it's 12, um, 1200 pages which uh barack obama reads it it's about six and a half hours okay i think that should work i think we're just going to stretch this episode a little bit okay uh but we i, I fans will love it <laughs> should should not be a problem <laughs> yes welcome to the show it's pretty easy it's kind of like pong on yeah. the Atari stick. Yeah, I would. I love to play pong. Love the Atari stick. Um, welcome to Couch Pilots. We're we're ready to we're ready to inject a little bit of fun into your life today via failed television pilots. Right. We we usually start the show. We're in the captain's lounge, just kind of hanging out, talking a little bit. Yeah. We don't get to see each other that much. No. Once a week, usually. And again, I, I will say, and I know I've said it before. I probably see you more than anyone else in my life, <clears throat> even though it's just once a week. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Man. I, I, I used to take that for granted. Oh, did you? Well, I never knew about it, or or at least I or at least I knew about it and didn't care. Well, I, <laughs> I complained a lot, but now I don't. Oh, do you feel like you were complaining? I felt like I complained. Why don't you ever want to hang out? Yeah, I like, kinda, fucking hang out every week, right? <laughs> and then Molly said, sat, "Molly sat me down, and she's like, Blake, Jason goes above and beyond. Don't don't push your luck." And then you invited me to your birthday party. God bless her. Yeah, and so you didn't have a microphone in front of you. I was thinking about it. I actually asked for a microphone themed cake, and I was just going to constantly have it in front of me when I talked to you, right. but none of that came to fruition. Thanks a lot, Mom. I don't have a lot of gatherings, mainly because my house is so tiny. Uh, my, my gatherings over at my place have, be, have become, as of late, fewer and fewer, so I don't have a lot of opportunities uh, to invite people over, but my birthday was an occasion that I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Um, we are very close to Christmas. Mm, the best time of the year. Love Christmas. Do you? Love, I, love, I love giving presents. Love getting them. Now, I saw you and your daughter at the Toys R Us. Kissing Santa Claus? Yes. And I was like, don't let that girl kiss Santa Claus. <laughs> no. Um, we did run into each other. Yeah. Right, we did. We, and we do from time to time run sure. into, in public. Um, we act like we know each other. Mm-hmm. We, uh, usually when we see each other, we're, we're dressed in our captain's garb. Sure. So, I, I wear mine all the time because it helps you get um, cut in lines. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I don't usually take advantage of that. So right. I know I kind of had to wave you down for a few seconds because sure. you didn't recognize me. Right. I wasn't in my pilot garb. Right. Um. All right. What What are you planning to give as gifts to your daughter? Do you have any, a plan? That night when I picked her up, she presented me with a rolled up piece of paper with like a uh, scroll. Absolutely, with twine. With a, she tied oh, twine wow. around it in a bow, and on this was she loves gel pens. Okay. Spe- specifically colored ones, and I don't mean like, like colored black. Like African American. Right. I don't mean like that. I mean like colors of the rainbow. Okay. Uh, with glitter. Like gays. Yeah, she gave me, uh, she loves homosexual gel pens with glitter in it, and she used the gay pens to write out, in each in each different color, she wrote out something different she wanted. Oh, that's great. And so I said, you know what? We're over here. Let's just go right over to Toys R Us. We can kind of take a look around these things so I can get an idea, and I can pass that information over to Santa Claus. Is she still believing Santa Claus? <sighs> I feel... I think she's doing it for me right now. Right, sure, sure. She, she's on the fence, and she's like, because she keeps testing me with questions. She's like, 
So I bet you really like eating those cookies every Christmas <laughs> Eve. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I know, I know you're eating those. He's like, no, I'm not, I, I don't eat those cookies. You leave them for Santa Claus, right? Uh, and then she's like. She wants to catch you in the act. She, she, yeah, wants you, she wants you to slip she's up. She's trying to get me to slip up. She's like, she's like a New York cop detective. Oh. And she's got you in, in, in the interrogation room. I see what you're doing. She said to me, Santa Claus, he goes, is every every house in one night? Santa Claus, <laughs> and, every house in one, every night. Like every, he goes, every house? He's like, I don't know, Dad. I don't know about that. <laughs> I said... I said, I don't know how he does it either. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not for us to, to, to know. I mean, there have been times where we've taken flights. Like last year, we took a flight, and we, we saw it. We, I can only assume right, right, it was Santa. Right. Because um, he, he zipped by us, or whatever it was, zipped by us so quick. We, you know, we, we have, you hear about highway hypnosis, right? Mm-hmm. You're driving down a highway, things get monotonous, you kind of sure. get entranced, and, and that can often cause wrecks. You know, people don't understand, because there's far, far fewer pilots than there are people driving, that there's, there's uh, sky hypnosis. Oh, and everything looks exactly the same. It doesn't matter where you're going, it looks exactly the same. The great thing about driving on a, a highway that seems monotonous is, oh, there you got a sign. There you got a dead skunk. Mm-hmm. There's a big rock. Check out that soybean field. Oh, we got a corn field over here. Not right. us. We're in the sky. Everything looks the same. Yep. I could be going straight up, and I, I wouldn't necessarily know if it wasn't for all the gizmos and gadgets in front sure, of me. Sure, sure. Um, boy, yeah. So sometimes you get highway hypnosis, and uh, one year you, you you think you see things, and I I I'm with you. I think it was jolly. Oh, it had to have been. It had to have been. Um, big ticket items, bunch of little stuff. What do you? How, what's your What's your plan of attack? There's a mix of things. Mm-hmm. Top of the list, she says, I want hover tracks, something, something. It turns out it's a version of the hoverboard. The It's it's like the Segway that's got the two wheels, you know? Sure. Except the wheels are much smaller. It's like the hoverboard where you stand on it, and it's a, it's like a sideways skateboard that goes forward. And it's those. It's not the one that's been known to catch fire, the hoverboard. It's hover tracks, and it's $500. Oh, nice. So she won't be getting that. She understands that, though, right? She'll, we'll blame that on Santa that she won't be getting right. She understands she, that, right? That's $500. I think, I, yeah, well, we saw it because that's one of the things we looked at while we saw when we saw you at Toys R Us. And she's like, um, I don't think I'm getting this. Like She, she, she understood immediately. It's that's like, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. I, I've put your life in perspective for you. Sure. <laughs> How about you? Did you find everything you were looking for at Toys R Us? Uh, yes, we set a budget for each child. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you because a child is within reaching. Fair enough. And, and but, so sometimes, honestly, he does reach right through the um, the plane here, and right. he does grab at us. Mm-hmm. Grab asses. <laughs> child, your child's always playing grab ass with us. Um, all I can say is Santa Claus did a good job. Got him exactly what they, for the most part, what they wanted. Uh, there was a couple things that were big, huge ticket items that we didn't understand were big, huge things. Such as? Uh, there's a Pokemon like uh, Pokemon Go like uh, watch. That's a big ticket item? Oh, yeah. It's impossible to find. You can't find them anywhere. Huh. Um, and, you know, but we, we think that uh, the children will be happy. And that's all that we can do. Uh, I bought my house a wife and my wife a house. And she bought me a house and a wife. <laughs> The gift of the Magi. So, she, and, and, but Molly will buy me a present. What or, have you asked for? We were not we're not supposed to buy each other presents this year because we bought each other a house. But she will again buy me awesome presents, and I will have bought her nothing <laughs> because I'm keeping with the sanctity of marriage and giving my word. As long as you set expectations, right? Oh, that's a story of my life, Jason. Expectations. I have expectations from everything from my job to my podcasting. To my family. That's good. because and they all fail me. Oh, hopefully you're setting that bar low enough. And if you are, then that really stinks that they're failing you. Because <laughs> there's things we can't control, Captain sure, Rester, sure. And I sure. hope you don't let those things eat at you because... Not anymore. I used to. Good. And how, um, how do you combat that? Is it a psychological thing? Is it eating? What are you trying to say? Well, I, I know a while back we talked about how almost any feeling on the spectrum of feelings resulted in you gorging yourself. Yeah. Um, I have really worked hard in the last few years with acceptance. There you go. Um, I've always had a problem with acceptance, but the last few years, for the most part, pretty good. And you, and you look great. Thanks. Mentally, I think you're the healthiest. I have a rash. Besides your rash, you look great. I wish you maybe you could cover that up so we don't see it. No, I don't want. It's off-putting to look at. Does it bother you? 
I don't. I don't care for it. We're back to back. It's fine. Yeah, as long as we stay back to back. My kiss. Let's turn this mother out. Let's turn this mother out. But you know what? Maybe before we turn out, we should li- hear some fan feedback. Oh. We got some fad feedback. Is that right? Some fad feedback. Some. It's all. It's fad. You know. Sure. People. It comes in waves. Uh, these people will quit listening to us. Is like everybody else. <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, Lori Garcia. Okay. <laughs> she. I, I don't know. I don't know what she. I think she wants to own the show. I think she wants to accumulate enough points, frequent flyer points wise, to own Couch Pilots. Well, I'll tell you. Between her and Big Dick T, they have so many frequent flyer points. We are lucky that they're all the way across the country. Can you imagine if they get married and then they accumulate all their points together? They'd be unstoppable. But if they got divorced, then they'd probably have to divvy up half the points, I think. I, if they get married, do you think they would invite us? I would. They'd probably have a Couch Pilots themed wedding, I would assume. Oh, that would. Let's go over that for a second. Okay. A Couch Pilots themed wedding. Right. First of all, the bride comes in to the Wings theme. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Then. Um, then you walk her down the aisle. I walk her down the aisle because you're. I'll you're, officiate. You're officiating. Um. Uh, Richard, don't call him Dick, also known as Big Dick T. Yeah. He would be wearing a leather bomber jacket and aviator glasses. And she's dressed as a stewardess, and she, but with a long stewardess dress. Exactly. Very flowing. Um, and then instead of rice, they'd throw pilot's wings, you think, as they go down the aisle? Like the flower girl? Ouch. Or maybe, no. Um, oh. Maybe the, okay, yeah. But halfway through the ceremony... There would be stewardesses with carts going through each of the pews, <laughs> offering sodas, beverages, or peanuts. And, and the bubbles. Oh, they could throw peanuts. I they, like that. that they yeah. could throw peanuts. Um, and maybe instead of rings they wear, they would wear the wings. The, yes. Like, yeah. Instead of rings, they would have wings. That's where the wings goes in. Okay. Um, they would uh, see the reception. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they would. Yeah, we could rent out a, a plane hangar. We could maybe even do it in Air Force One. Um, playing songs from like Air Supply, love Air Supply, and we play Nelly's Air Force One song, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, so many great big old jet airliner. Oh, yeah, Steve Miller band. Yeah, love Steve Miller. Um, I think this will work. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, set your date. Just make sure it's not during CouchCon. Right. That's that's really the only, and, and, or do it at CouchCon. Everybody will be there already. Um, Conrad would be obviously be the best man. Mm-hmm. Conrad's yeah. definitely going to be the best man for sure. uh, for Big Dick T, uh, and he could draw like the design of the napkins and because he's a tattoo artist. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, God, this is great. This is really shaping up to be quite a wedding. Um, I think Big Dick T. There's only one thing he can get Lori Garcia for Christmas, and that's a Will you marry me? Yep. Well, so anything short of that will surely decimate the entire relationship. Yes. And, and uh. Stop them from cuddling in any Yes, in and future. if I was her, I would say, hey, ultimatum time. Yeah. I'm either going to move to Pe- Pekin and hang out with the boys, right. or you're going to marry me. Uh, Lori Garcia writes, oh, my God, this podcast was hilarious. It is so true. I'm, um, I'm, pretty to be bre- I'm too pretty to be breeding with, a.k.a. Big Dick T. And that's where I was like, Big Dick T, he shall be called from now on. And he said, still waiting on my prize. We talked about this. It took us a while. We made him a bigger prize. Blah, By blah, now, blah. he has it. Yeah. Surely. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I have all the stuff. Just trying to find a box. I got you soon, bro. Do you think that he actually has a large penis? There's no doubt in my mind that he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. That he does not? Right. Why would she have so much time to, to Facebook us and stuff? Oh, if she, if, I mean, if he had a big enough penis to pleasure her, she would be spending less time... Writing and listening to podcasts. And writing and listening to him. Uh, and finally, he, uh, Lori writes, Couch Pilots, I know, a.k.a. Big Dick T, is looking forward to those rare bottle caps. He can't wait to save them and tell our grandchildren about ho- about the 2016 was a crazy year when people collected bottle caps. Great year. So in her eyes, they're already married. They're having grandkids. But until he, you know, basically seals the deal by popping the question, putting a ring on that thing. Hey, if you fuck it, put a ring on it. That's right. I would love. I would love if to. If you fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, put a ring on it. If you fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, put a ring on it. Uh, 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 the show uh, is built on the back uh, of his songs. Uh, uh, uh. 
uh, uh, uh. That's a little body pop in there. It was really good. <laughs> it was, that was a treat only for me. Exactly. Um, um, folks, if you want us to go back to doing the video, a small donation on fcfnetwork.com. There's a donation button. Any donations will help. We're trying to get to $100,000. We need 100000 mm-hmm. but we'll settle for like $15. Sure. What about uh, – do you have any more fan feedback? Um, no, I don't think I do. I'm going fl- to flip through one more time, but I, I think we got – I think we've covered it all the last couple of episodes because you did <laughs> – Gotcha. Failed pilots. They're out there. Have you not found the failed pilot that I asked you about seven months ago? Hit me. About a year after the movie was made and rehearsed, released, a TV series pilot based on the movie was filmed starring Don Johnson in the Kenny Rogers role as Brewster Baker. The pilot failed and no TV series was made. This is like um, the, the, Six we pack. had all the kids. It does... Um, I could not find it. I did look into it. Okay. I appreciate the effort. No problem. Um, how do you know when to stay or to go? And how do you know it's real? Thoughts are turning, burning. The show is built on the back of his songs. Um, yeah, I would love to watch that. Unfortunately, it's not a thing that we can see. So I'm sorry to report that. It doesn't meet the criteria. We can't be found. It cannot be found. But uh, you know what can be found? Failed pilots. Other ones. Other failed pilots. They're out there lurking in the shadows. That's out of work. That's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. These, they're lurking in the shadows. Out of work. Robbing folks just to get by. These former well-intentioned pilots were denied by the very world they set out to entertain and had no choice but to turn to the streets. Here at Couch Pilots, we have devoted our lives to giving them a second chance and rehabilitating them so that they once again can become functioning members of our society, and all that we ask is for hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's it. Well, we, we do it for free. We, we, we launch this podcast for free. I know, but like, if you don't ask, they'll never give it oh, to don't you. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, if, you don't, if they don't ask for failed pilots, we won't tell them about them. <laughs> today, hey, that's yeah, a good point. Today we discuss the pilot episode of Beat Cops from their Year of Our Lord 2000 Ad 3 Great year, I'm. I'm fairly. It was a fairly good year. Um, things that happened in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I'm satisfied with that year. Okay, glad. I'm, that's uh, only you can only take in the inf- you. Oh, only you. This show is built on the back of his songs. If you'd like it, then you should have put a rating on it. Oh, oh, oh. Whoops. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> you're, you you process a year very quickly, and you regurgitate an answer, and you're satisfied with that year. That's good. But it's only good for me. It's not good for our listeners. Well, maybe if we take them back in time to events that happened that year, maybe they'll realize it was a good year for them. In the words of Tone Loke, let's do it. I love Tone Loke. Cooling it at the park. Oh, let's yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm getting looked after, dog. What other songs besides Hey You Two, I Was Once Like You, and I Like to Do the Wild Thing? Did he sing? Um, the only two songs. Looked After Dark. I don't know that one. Okay. He, the, Beside. Oh, okay. I, I know, yeah, of course, Wild Thing. And then um, Funky Cold Medina. Ah, boom, jump, 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 Pretty good. Thanks. Pretty good tone, Loken. Good Loken out, brother. <laughs> what happened in the year of our Lord 2000 at 3? Let's go back to that year and put ourselves in that mind frame by talking about some of the popular events of that year. The Do Not Call list starts providing consumers on June 27th with an opportunity to limit telemarketing calls. Doesn't limit it at all. It doesn't work. The majority of people did not have cell phones in 2000 Ad 3, but now they do. I see every call that comes to me. I don't have to answer it. Back then, we may, I mean, you had, this call our ID was pretty prevalent. Sure. But if it came up private or something, you know. Or unavailable. 
Right. You you would still maybe answer and say, "Hey, it was," and then you get, hey. you get, "Hey, hey, well, how would you like to try this new Tide detergent? Are you happy? Are you satisfied with your current laundry?" A little click. Now they go door to door. Uh, and the, just this week, I've had two different people come to my door. About what? Uh, one was the people that are supposedly like in competition with Amron, saying, "Hey, we can make your your Amron bill smaller." And the other one was uh, a construction company. Get this. Would you and the missus like to do any renovating? I was like, excuse me? Uh, first of all, we just moved in here, and it was moving ready. Second of all, uh, it's my wife, not the missus. Nice. Really gave it to those guys. Mm-hmm. I, I had someone show up at my door who was the um, – I don't know if they were in competition with Amarin or they kind of worked in tandem with them. They make it sound like it's in tandem, but there's, it's, it's shady. It's, it's got to be shady in some way. A guy came to my door. And he, he's he says, like, "Can I see your Amron bill?" Yeah, I'm like, no, you can't. See yeah, my he said that to me too. He's like, "A lot of your neighbors are switching over." He's like, "Can I just uh, take a look at your Amron bill?" And I said, "No, you can't look at it." Right. And um, he, uh, the guy came to my door. He was wearing shorts. He was wearing sandals, and he had like like tons of scruff. And I was like, "You look like a piece of shit." Right. And so I was like, "No way am I going to give you any of my information." And he left kind of like an asshole and pissed off. He failed. Sure. And, and I. It, it's not. I don't think it's technically a scam, but what they do, I think they even out your bill month to month to make it more solid, so you can. I think their intent there is to, so you can plan on what it will be almost month to month. But in that, you can end up paying more if it doesn't even out that way. Do you want to hear a story real quick? I'd love to. At the apartment, we did that. We were on a payment plan with Amarin. We didn't use a different company, but we were on a payment plan with Amarin. Uh, we paid the same thing every month. Uh, we moved out of there. I had to pay them four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, because that's how much the difference was. That's what they do, and that's how they get you. Get you. They, they present it as you know a money saving thing, but often it will add up to more. Why am I? Why? Why is a guy in cargo shorts and scruff and fucking sandals showing up at my front door asking for? Get the hell out of here! Yep. And I sent that motherfucker packing. I don't put up with that shut. He went over, went across the street to your mom's house. <laughs> hey, ma! <laughs> See that guy coming over there? Don't listen to a word he says. Armed undercover sky marshals are used on aircrafts to prevent terrorist attacks following 9-11. We were actually recruited when we got out of sky cop school. Yeah, you and I, um, yeah, we went to sky cop school. As, as all of us you know, we went to Phoenix Online University. And then we we, we walked. I remember that day that we graduated. We walked out there. Mm-hmm. We put. We had our caps on. We moved the tassel from one side to the other. And just like I think a good example of it would be like Forrest Gump. Remember when he he played f- uh, football for the university? He graduated, and as soon as he graduated, he's out there with his mom. And someone from the military came up to him and recruited him to the army. Sure. Same thing was happening to us. Yep. They were they they were holding bags of money. Oh yeah. Just like like what's. Scrooge McDuck. Oh yeah, I, I think at one point I, got, I even saw a, a, an, an actual duck dive into a pool of coins. Right, and they're like, "Hey, you guys want to make a lot of money? Super easy job." Well, I was like, I had stars in my eyes. Sure, and, and I, you know, I, I grabbed you by the shoulder and I was like, "Hey, buddy, let's just listen to what he says, but don't don't say anything." It was like I had smelled a pie in a cartoon. Uh, I was just kind of drifting off the ground. And yeah, yep. thankfully we had you feet solidly on the ground. Grab me back. I'm the pessimist of the group. You're right. You're the optimist. I'm the I'm doe-eyed the, optimist. Right, and I'm the the hard scrabble pessimist. Hard scrabble, <laughs> whatever that was <laughs> you said. Um, you know, and they're like, all you gotta do is just you know sign on this dotted line. Take a flight. Take a flight five times a week. Yeah, two weekends a month. Right. Yeah. Uh, th- two weeks a year. Right. Yeah, and you know, it just sounded. You know, like, what, what would we do? We're like, oh, you just sit on a plane with your gun and just, you know, you're just dressed like a normal guy. And if there's terrorists, it's your responsibility to shoot them. Yep, and he he had a fold-out table and he spread all the money, said all this could be yours. And boy, oh boy, like I said, I just saw stars. Right, because at that point, you were in financial shambles. Right. At that point. Thank God, no longer. Exactly. And um, you had, you kind of, you saw kind of between the lines. Sure. And you're like... Hey, you know what? Trust no one. If it's too good to be true. It probably is. So we had to put the kibosh on that. Mm -hmm. Luckily, um, when we did become pilots, we became sky cops. Sure. Which to me is a little bit better than being a sky marshal. Yeah. I mean, our jurisdiction is wider. Yeah. Um, We can pull people over. 
Mm-hmm. Whereas if we were Sky Marshals, we couldn't. Can't do that, Sky Marshals. Right. Um, and to be honest with you, you, get a lot more chicks because they see us in our uniforms. Yeah, that's right. Sky Marshals, they don't know. They got to blend in. We could sit right. right next to some hot fucking gal with her tight ass mini skirt. You know, high heels, six inch high heels. Yeah, she's, yeah. You know, she's, she's on her way to Ve- she's on her way to Vegas. Yeah, to do some private work. <laughs> and we we if we hit on her in just normal martial, they would, she wouldn't give us time of day. But but we, but we wear a sky cop uniform. She's like, Let's, hey, you want to join the Mile High Club? Exactly. Bada bing, bada bada that's, boom. that's exactly the distance that we fly at. We high. only fly fly exactly a mile off mm-hmm. the ground. And um, you and I are both Mile High members. Sure. Not just because, I mean, not like from each other. Like no, we no, that's that's crazy. But um, we do we do have sex with a lot of girls that are exactly a mile off the ground. And, and people joke about it and say, you know, you have sex in airplane. But there, there actually is a card membership. And oh, there, yeah. And there's a, uh, a brick and Meyer brick and mortar place that you can go and actually celebrate your, you know, there's a club, there's a lounge that you right. go to. So and You just knock on the door three times, mm-hmm. and then they say, how many feet are in a mile? That's, right. how you, that's how you get that's in. That's the code to get in. Right. We, yeah. can't, we can't tell them. I'm not going to tell anyone yeah. here. It's a, it's a secret. Not many people know what the answer to that is. But hey, I love being a Sky Cop. We made the right choice. And we get to uh, you know bang broads 10 at a time for a dime. It's fantastic. Nice. Tens of thousands of Harley owners gather in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to celebrate 100 years of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Are you a motorcycle guy? Um, <clears throat> I had one for a short period. Did you now? Yeah. Um, I was actually, uh, up until about... Four months ago, I was actually toying with the idea of applying for a few jobs in Milwaukee at the Harley Dave in logistics. Really? I don't know if I ever heard that. Yeah. That was kind of an incognito thing I was doing. People always say there's two types of motorcyclists. You ever hear this? Mm-mm. Ones that have gotten a wreck and ones that'll be in a wreck. Hey, hey. So you used to drive, you used to ride a motorcycle, mm-hmm. you said? Yeah. And how many, did you ever wreck? Uh oh, here it comes. He's going to say no, but <laughs> the truth is yes. Uh, I I tipped it over. I was getting gas once. I was getting gas. Is that the truth? I t- yeah, it's it's a guy. So help you gun? I tripped. I, I I was getting off of it. And I I thought I had the kickstand all the way up, but I didn't, and uh, it 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 fell to the ground. Did anyone see you? Oh yes, there. there someone had to help me get it up. <laughs> but did you, did you do all the stuff in the middle then? <laughs> exactly. I was like, damn! I wish I knew a guy named Jason. How old were you when this show was released? Beat cops. Beat beat cops. Wow, that's a lot of math. Thirteen years. I was twenty two. I was twenty eight. Yeah, that makes it easier, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> um, I'm not good with prime numbers. It, they're tough. Prime numbers are tough. A lot of times we look at these pilot episodes and we have to say, "There's so many pilots out there." Right. We have to run them through. Kind of a, a digital cheesecloth, if you mm-hmm. will, to to know whether or not they will qualify for for the show Couch Pilots. Right? Can you tell us what those three requirements are? Uh, three requirements are uh, they had to have been a pilot, never gone to series. Uh, it doesn't matter if they aired or not, as long as there was not more than one made. Uh, that's number one. Number two is we had to be able to find it. Unlike Six Pack, which I'm hoping it was in just a different name. Uh, I would hope Don Johnson's IMDb page would have it, but. Yeah, it has to be readily available. We have to be able to find it so we can watch it. And number three, it's got to be free. We are not paying for these. Uh, there is another, there is another podcast that reviews bad movies, and they actually some they have to pay for those. Like they have to pay to find them sometimes. Who's that? How did this get made? Oh, oh, you do have to. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes, they, sometimes they do have to actually pay for it, and we're not doing that. So those are the three criteria that we have. To be eligible to be reviewed on Couch Pilots podcast. Yep, that's right. Um, Six Pack, by the way, also starred Marky Post from Night Court. Did you know that? Oh, I thought it was from New Kids on the Block. Marky Post. Marky Mark and the Post Bunch? Yeah. Post, Post make a great breakfast cereal. Fantastic. Hey, if you want to be healthy, hell yeah. So you're probably saying, fine. This television show you're watching, this pilot episode, one and done, it made it through the requirements. But where can a humble gentleman or lady, as it turns out, we do have female listeners, where can I find that episode? Well, you can uh, find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice. And then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or 
Go to Melee, uh, D- Melee. Go to DailyMotion.com and search Beat B- Cops or download the Daily Motion app for a smoother viewing experience. Yeah, we're gonna. We love Daily Motion. We uh, have wanted to reach out to them, you know, for a sponsorship. Uh, their app works great. Don't go to their website. Yeah, they're not paying us to say that. No. It, we genuinely feel that way. And uh, so much of what we do comes from places like YouTube and Daily Motion, and, and Daily Motion really has some just kind of one-off gems that you can't find anywhere else. So if you're an avid listener to our show and you want to enjoy those pilots, I would strongly suggest you download the Daily Motion app because some of our blue links, our classically blue, blue links, will take you right there. Exactly. So why don't we take off the plane? And we'll get this mother started. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Tarmac John down there waving the golden cone, sending us into the the sky for yet another adventure. Now, did you already did you already get his Christmas present from us? The cat, the replacement cat for yeah, his recently deceased cat mittens. It's done. Okay, cool. It's done. So I haven't given it to him yet. I'm gonna wait for Christmas, but I have the cat in a crate at home. Okay, so it's a real cat. It is a real cat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's in a crate. And ten bucks is all I know you, right? Yeah, and I just I, I actually found the cat near a dumpster. The the ten dollars. So you give it a hot dog. I gave it a hot dog, and I went back to back with it, and I kissed it, and then I uh, took it. I took the ten dollars, and I get I got him some shots, and then I got him declawed. Okay, sweet. So I, I think we're good. Right. Oh, summary of the pilot: Two policemen are oblivious to the city and violence around them. Summary. That's that's all there is. That's it. That's all there is. That's like eight words. <laughs> this summary is not a great summary of the show, but what it is. Is it's, it's a precursor to the rest of what we know about the show, which is not much. Really? There's not a lot out there about huh. beat cops. Interesting. Well, we're going to get into that right now. Interesting facts, the section of the show where we look into behind-the-scenes information that you will not find out simply by watching the, the show itself. So you got to come to us. We're your suppliers. We're your yeah. fact suppliers, baby. You're going to get high on our supply. First fact is free, baby. Yeah, you know? exactly. And you'll be back. Conrad's back all the time. Well, Biggie's back. back all the time, man. <laughs> the voice hears he hears an interesting fact, man. He just like I gotta get love those guys. Bow. Love I gotta the... get some bow. Hey, Biggie, this is Jason. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Lori's like, hey, by showing my boobs, maybe they'll give me some more facts for free. Whoa, I didn't ask for that. Hey, but we'll would I take it? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll take boobs in any format. Um, interesting facts. Just the name of the segment. We present you facts, you take them in, you shut your mouth, you don't say anything about them, because nothing you say matters in relation to these facts. And it will be held against you. Sure, in a court of law. Well, that and with frequent fire points. And if uh, you're, you have a great body, you might, would you hold, if I told you you had a great body, would you hold it against me? I would hold it against your body That's keep I think you warm. That's the pun of the joke. Right. Produced by Conan O'Brien's company, Conaco, or Conaco, Conan Co. How do you say that? I don't know. Conan Co. It's produced Conan by Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. Love Conan. Yeah, you are a big Conan guy. Eh, I, I don't watch him. I really, I honestly have not seen a full episode of Conan in probably seven years. Oh wow! I don't have TBS. Um, he's okay. He's all about self, a self-deprecation, like to the point where it's like, I get it. I right, get you hate it. Yourself. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, but he has funny bits. Like his remote bits are is, is where he shines. Because he, he came up through Sketch, right, Conan? Sure. Um, the show's original pilot was in limbo for two years before being reshot for Fox. And that is going to play into some stuff that we have to talk about later. Okay. We only saw one version of this. Uh, to me, only one version is available to be seen. And even if there were two pilots that both failed... That reminds me of the show Next that we watched a couple months ago where that show had two pilots, but they were both pilot episodes that failed. So so we still counted it. We we let it in the back door. Right. I love it in the back door. Back door. Whoops. His belches are building the backs of our butts. (sighs) All right. Sorry about that. Um, Stars Notables, H. John Benjamin, uh, Sam Cedar, and Nick DiPaolo. Hey, Nick DiPaolo. Hey. 
So you recognize you didn't recognize Nick DiPaolo in the pod and or in the uh, show, but you recognize his name. And I was writing stuff down though. I was I was at that moment I was writing something about bike cops. Nick DiPaolo, moderate amount of success as a comedian, a comedian's comedian. Would you say? Amen to that. Yeah, I think he had a, a nice couple turns on uh, Tough Crowd. You remember that show? Tough Crowd. Over the past couple years, I've noticed has become one of those Comedy Central shows that has taken on a legendary status. It was hosted by uh, Colin Quinn, and it featured usually three to five comedians that would sit around and talk about current issues. And they okay. would talk about them as comedians would, hard and abrasive and what I would like to think is real. Sure. And it only lasted for, I think, two or three seasons. But it has, it has since, like I said, gained legendary status because it featured people who have passed away, like Patrice O'Neill and uh, Greg Giraldo, and it um, it featured it kind of cemented in time what was happening in comedy right. and who the comedians comedians were. So um, Nick DiPaolo is one of those guys. Um, Sam Cedar, who is I believe Stan in, in the show, he has uh, been a writer. He works I think with uh, Mark Maron on occasion, okay, and has has uh, done a lot of writing and does a lot of stand up and has start and or has had like kind of bit parts and things over the years. Okay. And then also uh, H. John Benjamin, probably the most successful out of all these gentlemen, and he is known for his voice. Mm-hmm. Where do you recognize John Benjamin uh, from? Bob's Burgers. He's Bob. Do you did you recognize his face when you saw him, or you heard the voice? You're like, I know that voice. I heard the voice first, and I'm like, I've seen this guy do stuff, but the voice was is very, very um, recognizable. Absolutely. Sorry, it was a really hard word. No, there, there's a couple people currently who are doing vo- voice work. One of them is Chris Parnell. He's a former SNL guy, and he does, he's done a lot of voice work. And um, and John Benjamin. To me, these are some of the most successful. Guys doing voice work right now, besides people like Billy West or uh, John DiMaggio. John Benjamin, uh, did you ever see that show, John Benjamin Has a Van? It lasted for 10 episodes on Comedy Central. That was a funny show. Huh. He's been on shows like Dr. Katz, another legendary cartoon. Uh, he was on a great episode of Space Ghost. Uh, what else? Uh, Archer. He is Archer. Okay. And like you said, he is Bob's Burgers. Right. Both very wildly yeah. successful and it's shows. it's the same voice. Yeah, it is. That, that is the funny thing about him. We were mentioning earlier how you know you look back at, at classic voice actors like Mel Blanc, and he had this incredible range. And honestly, I think a lot of people hold him up there as, as one of those landmark guys who did voice work. And then you look at John Benjamin, who just pretty much does one voice right. all the time. <laughs> he was also in um, – he's the voice of the can in Wet Hot American Summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah. great stuff. Uh, that's it. Interesting facts over. Not a lot. Not a lot out there. That just leaves more to be desired. I mean, it just, you know what I mean? It just shows how much of a niche situation we got here. Yeah, I agree. Next section, Twitter responses. All right. We reach out to the creators, writers, reach directors. Reach <laughs> Reach out. That should be our theme. It should be. I hope you sing that every episode going Heard forward. Every episode. Uh, we reach out to these people involved with the pot or the pilot rather, and we see who reaches back. We're very cordial. We don't ask them for anything except maybe you know something funny or behind the scenes that happened. They yeah, want to contribute. Ask, we don't ask them for like an autograph um, or blood sample or any kind of stool like sample memorabilia from beat cops or something. You know what? We don't ask them for. That. I, I, what kind of memorabilia would you like from this? Uh, I would like the the UPS lady's jacket. I would like a little clipping of uh, John Benjamin's hair on the top of his head because it is now gone because he's bald. Oh. So that's a kind of a thing that you, you can't get back. Right. So um, this is this is funny because they – and, and interesting facts, we dug into the fact that there was an original pilot and then it was reshot for Fox. We saw a version that was really just – about five actors, I want to say. Yeah, it was. It was. There was not a big cast. I take it back. Seven. But you're right. Still not a big cast. Um, it was obviously shot over a couple of days because the weather was different in every scene. Okay, they were always. They're pretty much always outside. Oh yeah, that's the whole thing. It's completely outside. Yeah. You got you got the two main cops that were following. You got the mailman. You got the doorman that was being obnoxious. <laughs> you got the package lady that was different packages. And then the two. And the two bike cops. So you got seven, cops. pretty much seven people in the cast. Bike cops, bikes. What's that? Bike cops, bikes. I I don't know what that is, but I like it. Oh, that's, that's the that's the theme for bike cops. It's a 
It's a it's a, a pilot that I'm working on. Really? Bike cops. What? I mean, do we have time to dig into these? Is there anything you want to mention about it right uh, now? I can't really talk about it right now. Okay. But bike cops, bikes. Wow. You, if, if that's the start of it, great start. Thanks. Uh, as far as I've gotten. Oh, that's as far as you've gotten. So really, you did have time to talk about it. <laughs> uh, so when we look at the, the cast list for Beat Cops, it is almost twice as long as everyone we just mentioned, and everyone who is just on the uh, in the show itself that we saw. So when we reached out to people involved with Beat Cops, we had someone reach back who I'm not sure we even saw in the show. Right, because uh, what was her name? Her name was uh, Chital Sheath, or Sheth. Beautiful one. Oh, gorgeous. Um, do you want to read it, or you want me to read it, or...? Okay, well, as we always do, we say, hey, this is what we do. This is who we are. And if you have anything you want to contribute, we'd love to talk about it on the show. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And uh, Chital Chef writes back, how fun. Been a while, but I remember Sam. Been a while. <laughs> but I remember Sam Cedar being a doll. Was a bummer uh, the show didn't get on air. And to which Sam Cedar replies, uh, you were great. That was fun and so long ago. So, I mean, a little bit of interaction. We'll take it. I think Sam Cedar is kind of one of those cool alternative underground, you know, comedian writers from New York City. So that was really cool that he reached out, um, even though if it was just to her. But I, I cannot – it says that she played a character um, by the name of Gwen Lampour, and I don't, I don't remember her. Because you said it, it says the, the corner or something in there. Well, there's, someone else, there's some other guy named Albert Howell played the corner. Don't remember him in the pilot. I think there were two different versions of the pilot. Right. And we reached out to some people who weren't in the one that we saw. Okay. Okay. It, it happens. happens. It does happen. And it's okay. I would love to see their version of it. Maybe it's a little different. Maybe it's a little better. Maybe it's a little worse. I would love to check it out. Maybe Sam's got a copy of it. Maybe, yeah, maybe Sam's listening right now and would send us a copy. Maybe not. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the, the plot of Beat Cops, but not before we listen to a commercial for one of my favorite shows, IBWIP. For over eight years, Blake Clayton, the podcasting god, has brought you the best in roots music, adult comedy, and real talk with his ever-revolving cast of co-hosts in the form of It Burns When IP. Join one of the true podcast originators, along with intern Heather and the Bottle Cap Kid, as they play games interview interesting characters, and just maybe uncover the meaning of life. New episodes of IBWIP can be found every Friday on the Fakakta Comedy Network. Check us out at fcfnetwork.com and join in on the fun. Oh! Oh! <laughs> it was funny, though. We, we did have uh, we had Dave Rowan. Oh, you know what? I just wanted to hug him all day long. And he wanted me to hug him. I was not his first choice. But I was also not the last choice. Who was his last choice? I, I, okay, so I, I so Dave Rowan, gay fella, gay fella from the Low Blow sure. podcast. We're not. That's, we're not, that's not any news. No, oh no, right. no, we're not. We're not outing him as a gay right. fella on Couch Pilots. <laughs> um, but he, uh, yeah, he came in and was so kind to rate us on our attractiveness, where you and I tied at a six, uh, and in, in in my eyes, six out of six. But sure. I think it was six out of ten. Sure. And then he uh, he gave Dustin an eight. Eight, but Jacob got a ten. I think, yeah, he wanted to he tumble wanted, in the rough with that guy. He wanted to tumble in the rough um, with Mute Jacob. I got a picture from Mute Jacob this morning, bright and early, um, which I thought about sending to Dave, but I didn't because of confidentiality. Acts. But <laughs> Dave would have loved it. Can I guess what it is? Sure. A butthole. Close. Close to it, like physically close to a butthole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could we put a link to that in our show notes? Um, probably not. I, you know, as far as I know, you, Jacob, a uh, heterosexual man, so I don't want to out him, but it seemed like Dave was pretty confident in his ability to score with Jacob had he pursued it. That's one thing about Dave. I will say Dave is not lacking in the confidence Oops. department at all. Like, he was like, pfft. You know, give me five, give me ten minutes with this guy. Mm. You know, and I'll rock his world. Yeah, just like Michael Jackson once said. Sure, and I was thinking to myself, well, if Molly says it's okay, ten minutes is only ten minutes. But you know, yeah, with it, you, yeah, it's not gay if you're. I, I'm not gay if you're sucking my dick. Right. I think that makes sense, right? I hope so. <laughs> what, what do you mean you hope so? 
<laughs> it's already happened, apparently. Um, yeah, so I was so happy to be rated by a homosexual. I think that was the first time that was done, at least to my face. I, I, I really think that sixes were kind of low. I think a, a seven and a half. May, I, from, you think you're a seven and a half? <laughs> I was very lucky. I was ready. I was, I was ready for uh, three point four, three point eight. That was the range that I was ready to receive. <laughs> I don't know if he was just being kind, but he really went above and beyond in his rating. Um, I'll take a six all day, all day or day. Have you seen me? Have you seen a mirror that I've been in? Not a, not six material, my friend. You don't think so? No, Jesus Christ, no. Okay. <laughs> and that's pretty much the whole pilot of Beat Cops. You're right. Thank you for tuning in to. Merry Christmas. But really quickly, that promo was for IBWIP, the show that started it all o- almost 10 years ago at this point. In May. Yeah, by by yourself, years. the podcasting god I'm in. Um, you're at, you were 31 years old, I guess, when you started that, huh? Yeah, I was, yeah, second marriage. Or 32, because uh, it was in May, and your birthday will have happened by then. Yep. So 32. So, yeah. Wow, incredible. Good old days. 10 years. Very few people can say they've been podcasting. Started with... Um, Adobe Audition 3.0 and a PlayStation microphone headset. Oh, PlayStation hat. Wow. If you like, um, if you like real talk, if you like fun news stories, if you like bits and games and and just a lot of kind of madness just and jokes fun, and good yeah, times. It's a bunch of buddies hanging around, having a good time, joining the fun every Friday on the FCF Network. IBWIP, please check it out and subscribe on iTunes. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the great years of entertainment you've given us. And thank you to the Trio Channel for bringing us the series Brilliant But Canceled. Did, a- we, did we deal with the Trio Channel before with um, the one with Batman? Yes, exactly, okay. that's exactly right. right. That's the, the Look Well. Look Well. Uh, also, right. oddly enough, produced by Conan. Oh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think that was written by Robert Smigel, one of Conan's buddies. Anywho, uh, uh, Trio picked up on this one, too. And the um, the intro is kind of breaking down. De- it, it seems like a serious intro where they're breaking down stats of, of how many people come into the force each year, how, how it's divvied up, who falls off, who does what. And it kind of breaks it down to these two guys. Right. It, it's, it goes all the way down, boom, to these two guys. And in 1991, two guys got desk jobs straight out of Academy Except on this day, Christmas day, they had to work the beat. Yeah, they had something they had never done before. I yeah. think they were in charge of the evidence room. Right. And they There's just, a picture of them just like kicking back. Yeah. Pretty sweet gig we got nice. here. No, get out and walk the beat. Mm-hmm. It was Christmas day, you say? Yep. Well, you've been saying... I got something to say to you. The show is built on the back of his songs. But I can't go outside until I put on my walking boots. These boots are made for walking. That's just what I'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to go over your Adam's apple. I'm going to crush it and you're going to die. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. hey, I like that song too, but you need to, you need to reel it in. Well, Nancy Sinatra, I mean, she was she had mob ties. <laughs> Is that Tell like, me she didn't have mob ties. Are we talking about like the kind of ties you wear at a formal event? No, I'm talking like, hey. Bring, ch- ch- Hello? Hello. Um, I need somebody killed. Okay, hold on one moment. Hey, it's Tony O.V. Yeah, this guy made me really mad. He said my thighs were fat. I want him dead. He's a dead man. Click. See? Wow, I guess she did have mob ties after all. It's Fennec Sinatra's daughter. Hey, Fennec Omasacho. Hey. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned, you sang that song, though, because I made a note of uh, several times there was music in this show. Yes, yes, quite a few times. Because it's, it's kind of, whether they meant to or not, there was an emphasis. Like, when you heard the music, it really hit you. Right. Um, two cops... Seem to be confused. These two desk jo- uh, just desk jockeys walking through the streets of of New York, the very streets they're supposed to protect, and just kind of walking around clumsily. Yeah, um, is this considered a one camera? While there definitely were different cuts, I would call it that. Right, yeah. because it had that feel of like, hey, there's a guy standing in front of me with a camcorder. At times, it at felt the beginning. like it felt like early. A reality show, yes, uh, almost like uh, early uh, real world era style Arr, camera shot. <laughs> <I'm> podcasting pirate, 
your headphones have <laughs> have migrated from your from your right ear to your right eyeball for some reason. <laughs> we got to stop drinking. Um, so these guys are they're out in the streets. They're at chilly New York day, and um, this is Seinfeld cops on the street. Okay, this is really being shot in New York. Yep, they can't hide it. Because I mean, on um, on a regular sitcom when they do New York, it'd be some backstage somewhere where it kind of resembles it. But they are genuinely; it's very obvious they are out in New York City, right. and it's a, by a camera, like a, a steady cam, someone's walking around with, and they're just having conversations. This is just a series of, of vignettes, a series of conversations these these two bewildered cops are having. Right. They start with the conversation. And it's Hank, right? Is the short one Hank? Yeah. Uh, John Benjamin is yeah. Hank. He's like. You ever notice that all package delivery people are good looking? Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, that's weird. Yeah. He starts talking about that. Uh, actually, you know, I will say right before that, Sam is talking, uh, Sam Cedar, which I think is Stan, uh, he's kind of, he says he's off put by the sunlight because he's been inside for so sure. many years. That's the kind of the, kind of the joke. And then, and then they blast Beck, you know, Beck. Yes, they play Devil's Haircut. They okay. play this, I think, twice during the show, and it's kind of to cut between scenes. And again, it feels very real world or MTV style from the '90s, where they're kind of jerking the camera around real quick mm-hmm. to cut between scenes, and then they'll jerk the camera kind of over to the action. Right, and that that's the style of, of shots they were using in this. And yeah, they used uh, the segue of Beck's Devil's Haircut song, which mm-hmm. is, I do I do like a lot. They also used cuts of like the the like Burroughs chart. Yes, they would kind of zoom in and like twist the the borough. Tra- that's right. actually right. It's, I think it was Manhattan, and then Manhattan's broken down into sure. different neighborhoods. Yeah, um, and then it's edited weird too. I noticed like there'd be a conversation when you mentioned uh, John Benjamin talking about how attractive the package deliverers are. He'll say something, and then they'll edit to where he'll say it again and again, but it cuts, and, yeah. it's, and it's obvious cuts. Yeah, it's they're, supposed to be like artsy, I think. Yeah, they're doing weird. They're playing with it weird on purpose. They mm-hmm. want they they're not hiding the fact that they're doing these cuts or making him say the line over and over again. They're, they're making it very plain to see. So he's talking about the delivery people being attractive, and it's clear that he kind of has the hots for this delivery girl. And Stan kind of pushes him to explore his feelings. Right. He's like, well, at first, the first time he talks about him, he's just kind of like, okay, you know. I think I think the the pushing happens later on in the episode because I think they deal with this packaging lady like three different times they, they keep running into her and but he does he does kind of start okay. that conversation okay. of hey you know what you got all these feelings you should let them out you should right. talk about your feelings i don't know why you're trying to and he even mentioned something that i i took note of called lancelot's regret sure um stan often talks in medieval kind of talk references yeah. and stuff during he's this. talking about like unsheathing yes or, yes and uh, he says lancelot's regret which i looked up it is not a real thing that is not a thing. Oh, it's not. Because I will say that I had a little bit of an emotional connection to this part of the show. Okay. Uh, they were talking about, you know, expressing your feelings or talking to women more, which is not something I do a lot. The man, the man's power center. Well, later you find out, yeah, that's the mouth, right? Right. But at this point, he's I, I looked it up because I thought maybe whatever Lancelot's regret was, if it was a real thing, it might mirror some things that I have in my life that maybe some hurdles that I'm trying to go over, but it is not. Oh. It was another dead end for me emotionally. <laughs> but you're right. The next the next segment, they do talk about a man's power center. Yeah, Hank describes the man's power center, and it says it's the mouth and, uh, and the mustache. What, what is the mustache? I forget what he called it. He says it's the eyebrow for the mouth. Right. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um yeah, and, and again, these are just conversations, just kind of casual conversations. Yeah. I, I, I feel they're, they're, they're <clears throat> so far that they haven't said, "Hey, we're going to this place," or they, "This is you know, you know that they're out there mm-hmm. uh, and why they're out there." Yep. But they're not on a path, or they're not in a destination. Like they're not like, "Hey, let's head to the diner," and then they have these conversations on the way to the diner. They're just roaming around New York as beat cops. Yeah, no real path. Nothing really to do. It's a. De- it's kind of a slow. Right. Christmas Day is a slow day. And then they 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 stop in front of a furniture store, and Hank is like, "Hey, you know, if I, you know, if my dividends or cash out or something like that, he's like, I'm going to get that set. Let's go in there." Yeah. And Stan's like, "We're not like we can go in there." And he's like, "Well, you know, we'll go in there and 
Look for some code violations. Sure, that gives a reason to get in. Stan then says, "Hey, I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom." Right. He's like, "Perfect. We'll go in there. You can just use the bathroom." No. no I, why not? I, I can't use the bathroom that I've never been in before. Right. But that doesn't really make sense, though, right? Or because if you've never done that, then you would you can never go to the bathroom anywhere. Right. Anyway. Then he, then he came up with all these these rules. Yeah, ways around his psychological dam uh, dams. Uh, after this scene, I'm watching this this pilot, and I say, this makes me think of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay. This show probably has a place where each scene is to begin and end, but there's nothing written in the middle. This it seems very improv-y to me. Like they are just they're just kind of talking. I, I don't know if you felt that way. There, there, it may have been more scripted than I thought, but it seemed very casual and not really funny a lot of the time no i <clears throat> i would expect more i guess i was expecting more joke wise um but yeah it, at first for the most part the conversations were just regular conversations there was no punch lines there was no meta-ness to them really you know yeah, like I mean? we're just supposed to be kind of a fly on the wall listening yeah to i, I just of... felt like i was just walking along with these two yahoo cops yeah Next, they they approach a doorman and they ask for directions. I, and I, I I don't remember why they wanted directions. Maybe they were looking for a place that he knew he could use the restroom. Right, that's what it was. And he was on, it was on Sixth Street or something. So they, they were looking this, for Sixth Avenue. Uh, Sixth, okay, yes. Um, they were confused by the street names and how the grid was set up. And I, if I, I'm not mistaken, I've never been to New York, but I mean, there it's it's a grid. They're six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, and. Yeah, I've got a map in my house of Paris, France. It uh, is a shit show on right, the streets. Right. Everything kind of goes to the center. There's zigzag streets. It's garbage town USA. Mm-hmm. New York. It's not in USA. I'm sorry, it's garbage town France SA. There you go. And then but I think Manhattan is celebrated for the fact that it is a perfect grid system. Sure. Extremely easily easy to get around. Right. Um so they were confused. They were wanting to know where Sixth Avenue was. So they ask a doorman who's standing in front of one of the hotels or something. Mm-hmm. And at first, it it seems like a que- normal question by anybody but a cop. Right. The doorman flips his shit. He, he, at, at, at first, like he doesn't believe him. Right. He's he, like, hey, he's you guys, yeah, yeah. being cool, funny guys. But once it sets in that these guys are serious and he understands they're cops, you're right. He loses his mind. Right. To the point where he rips off his uniform and is just screaming in, in, uh, in on the side of the street. You want to go? You want to fight me? Yeah, come on, to... come at me. The guy's ridiculous. He's probably thinking, I don't make much as a doorman. I I have money that is set aside for taxes, and my taxes go to these guys. This is insanity. It it, it seemed like a huge overreaction. It really did. A huge overreaction. <laughs> Uh, again, they cut to the Burroughs chart uh, for a transition. And then they start talking again about the delivery girl. And this is where uh, Stan mentions he, uh, you should un- unsheath your sword. Unsheath the sword. And, and I wrote that down. And I thought to myself, self, mm-hmm. tonight you probably should get some sex. Yeah. So I went, <laughs> I went and I said, hey, Molly, I want to unsheath my sword. Nice. Now, uh, when I think about unsheathing a sword in terms of a penis, I usually think... Maybe as a man who's not cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he has to pull back the foreskin that mm-hmm. that is his sheath to reveal the majesty that is his penis. The black majesty. Absolutely. Her black magistrate. Um, they then come across uh, a mailman. They kind of spotted earlier. Uh, I, I noticed earlier there was a cut across the street, and there's kind of a, a mutual nod to people who work for the government, essentially. Yep, yep. And then the mailman sees them. It but- comes up to him. Talks their ear off. Yeah, he's like, hey, this is this. I saw you guys earlier. I gave you the knot. And then he's like, uh, you know, I know it's, it's a 10 2. You know, we're, we're making contact here. He, and he just wouldn't leave him alone. He kept talking to him and, and talking cop talk to him. It seemed like a guy who maybe is not happy in his lot in life. And who wish, is, though? Sure. It's here, talk about acceptance earlier. Maybe you could teach this mailman a thing or two about accepting his lot. Tell in me, life. A, show me a guy who's happy. Yeah. And I'll show you a guy who's miserable. <laughs> well said. Fuchsia say. Did you say fuchsia? The color fuchsia yeah. say? Fuchsia say. <laughs> See, we've been doing this for over a year now. Yeah. And there's a lot of times um, 
like I, I think you're very witty and you're smart. And yeah, you, you yeah. say a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of times where I, 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 I think a line is, and I go with it, and you laugh. And then I think to myself, is he laughing because it was funny? No. Or is he laughing because it was totally stupid? I used to laugh at you because it was stupid. I, I, <laughs> no, I, I have, I've come to realize in the past few months that I have, I've greatly underestimated you, and you, and you are much funnier than I have no. ever given you credit. No, some of the shit that you say is so fucking ridiculous, and I know it's not stupidity. I know it's just things that are very quickly thought out. Like when you, I, I hate to dwell on this, but um. When you mentioned that Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys was <laughs> Pet, Pet Cemetery, Cemetery and that Tom Wilson of Back to the Future fame and not Brian Wilson wrote it, you're not you're not you're not fucking up. That's, that's real shit that you came up with that really is very funny. And, and the fact that Fuchsia, the color, would say something is ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. You're 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 much smarter and funnier than I ever gave you credit for, and for that I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god! Okay, no, just just know that I am I I truly am laughing with you. Okay, you accept that? Yeah, I accept that. Oh my god! <laughs> Whew, we're, we're really having some breakthroughs tonight. The mailman, Jesus. I really think, is a guy who wanted to be a cop. Yeah. Oh yeah, he wanted to be a cop. He still wants to be a cop. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have what it takes. Didn't pass all the tests. He talks about having a website, something to do with. C- Police I don't website know. or precinct. He's like it's the unofficial one or something, and he talks a lot of cop mumbo jumbo. I think I was, but even they don't understand. I think I was paying attention to him as much as the actual cops were. Like they didn't care what he was saying; they were just trying to brush him off and brush him off. They did. And then you get and well during the scene, you get back in the background again. I don't know how familiar you are with Beck's no. catalog of music, no. but there's a song called Hot Wax, um, and so there's more Beck. I don't know how they got all this Beck music to be in it, but. Um, maybe Conan's good buddies with him. Yeah, maybe so. Cops walking along the street. All of a sudden, they come across a like a Pakistani guy who's got some like bags on the street. Yeah, some like bags garbage, of garbage bags. And the Pakistani guy is freaking out, and he's, he's like, "Don't super, take me away! Don't take my children!" He's super apologetic. You know, this is fresh off the heels of nine eleven. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe they're thinking any reason to take a man of you know Middle Eastern descent, you know. Behind jail cells, or find him, or you know, I, I don't, maybe that was their angle there. I honestly right. don't know. That, that, that maybe that stereotyped everybody, every Pakistani or Indian person in New York, and so that was kind of yeah, well, yeah. You know, that's how they had to start reacting because they were scared of the police. Yeah, maybe so. But he's worried about them taking him or taking his children, and he tries to he tries to bribe them with money. And he makes a really big deal about yeah, it. Yeah, like a he's, huge deal about it. And, it's all over like three bags of garbage that aren't even like full bags. And they don't give a shit. They never said anything. No, he they, approached them and yeah, they never even looked at him. And John and uh, uh, John Benjamin's like, it's fine. Just get get the hell out of here. So the guy kisses him like pretty much on the mouth, and then runs behind a closed door and cl- locks the door. And he's like, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, still searching for a place to use the bathroom. God damn, you are so good. I wrote the exact same words. Uh, they're they then become upset the lack of Christmas decorations in the city. <clears throat> yeah, they're like. You know, hey, we're we're supposed to be. This is the Christmas beat. We're yeah. all, we're supposed to be on the. We're working the Christmas beat. There should be no, yeah. no stores. No stores have any decorations. Nobody's got any lights up. Why not? They're the little bummed. Which is funny because I think they're both Jews. So right. So why would they give a right. shit? <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's their way of being meta about how there's too much uh, and not enough rhymer schnitzel. May, may, yeah, maybe not enough rhymer schnitzel. Sure, um, we. Maybe we're not giving these guys credits for how deep they were thinking about sure, this pilot. Sure, sure. Um, I don't they, think they were. They're continuing walking down the street, continuing their beat. They're confronted by bike cops, one of which we had mentioned earlier is Nick DiPaolo. And he knocks off um, He knocks off Stan's hat. Yeah, he comes by quick and blasts the hat right off. Making fun of them, Sam, or Stan rather, pulls his baton like he's ready for action, and they laugh at him. They're, they're, the co- bike cops are like, you guys are ridiculous. Right, and, and usually bike cops are the ones that people make fun of. Sure, absolutely. They, they, they do look silly with their little costumes. And once they're gone, John, or uh, I keep calling, I, I didn't Hank. realize his name was Hank, but yeah. Hank really lets Stan have it. Oh, he's like, I hate you. I hate everything about you. The reason we're out here is because you, right. everyone hates your guts, and I'm always with you, so they hate me in turn, and you suck. And and so like, they no, have you a, suck. Yeah, they have a big yelling match. And, yeah. You know, Hank's like, look at your collar, because he had like the the... the 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 sheepskin collar as opposed to Hank who just had a flip collar. He's like, you look ridiculous. 
And so they have this argument. So then Stan's like, fine, fuck you. I'm out of here. And starts walking away. And then Hank just kind of stands there for you're lucky I'm such a great partner. I want to keep walking with you. So it, there was really no like I thought. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna go their different ways. And one's and... gonna get in trouble, and the other one's gonna come and oh, help. Oh, sure. Them. That's what Which I thought. May have been a better scenario for the pilot. Yeah, but you. instead, they played the song. Everybody's talking at me. Yeah. I, I don't hear the words they say. I, it's before my time. The mailman spots him again and then comes over, and he thinks something big is happening. Oh, yeah. He's like, he thinks there's a stakeout. He's using all this, like, oh, you know, he's trying to be all keeping it cool he's and like, everything. I, I know why you guys aren't usually out here. I know we were out here today. It's, it's bizarre that you're in this area. There's a stakeout. Something big is happening. And then he's like, he's like, oh, my God. I think I just blew it. I'm so sorry. Right. I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to upset you. Let your... me talk louder. Yeah. He wants to help, and the cops kind of put him on a post just to kind of get rid of him. They say, right. yeah, you can, uh, something's happening. You can help us by doing this. And he's like, oh, absolutely. I'll totally do it. Right. And he's into it, and he runs off um, the silliness. Um, still, Stan has to go to the bathroom still. Yeah. So what's the, what's the solution this time? Uh, he's, he, it, they, they come up with the scenario that it's more about the seat and the cleanliness. So somehow they get a pink toilet seat. Probably went to some right. hardware store or something, picked it up. And they're going to go someplace, and he's going to put that seat on because he knows it's clean because he has it. Yep. Uh, and he goes, oh, shit, you know, bike cops. And so They're coming around the corner, and yeah. he spots what he thinks is the bike cops. And so he has them throw that toilet seat in the garbage. Uh, come to find out, it was just two people biking. It wasn't bike cops at all. Yep, and then, so the... The seat's already in the garbage. He's like, all right, let's grab the seat and go. He's like, no, it's, no can't it's, use it's it unusable now. It's now. Been in the garbage is disgusting. I don't know. This guy's neurosis. I don't know how he became a cop. They then see the delivery girl again, and then John, it's kind of funny. They, they're hiding behind a car to look at her. Right. He then is kind of made by Stan to go approach her. He's like, you got to stop screwing around. You're going to end up lonely. Go talk to this girl. He approaches her, and is this Kathleen Madigan? Is that this woman's name? Yeah, I think name? so. And this is actually the first time you hear Hank's name. I never heard Stan's name. The only reason I know that is because you told me before this started, and he obviously you saw that on IMDb. It never, I don't ever remember him hearing the word Stan. Uh, but you hear Hank. This is the first time you hear Hank's name. He's like, Hank, go over there. Um, and then you hear the song Smoke in the Water. Yeah. Smoke in the water. Fire in the skies. Bow, 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 bow. So Hank walks over to talk to the delivery girl. She's taller than him. Everybody's taller. Very than much him. taller. Than him. Everybody's taller than him. And she, he's like, he's kind of nervous. And he's like, hey, how, how you doing? And uh, she's like, hey, you know, I'm all right. I, I, I'm kind of busy, uh, but I'm a sucker for a guy in uniform. I got 20 minutes. Let's do this. Which means she wants to go. Let's have sex. Hell yeah. Hank feels super uncomfortable, gets super nervous, and is like, uh, 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 actually, I came over here to um, write you a citation for obstructing the sidewalk. (laughs) And she fucking flips out. She's like, you coming over here? You know, hitting on me, making moves on me, and then you're going, and and he had it. He had He was ready to go. He had Poontang to the left of him. Totally blew it. Totally blew it. Oh, boy. Really shot himself in the leg there. Um, John then goes back and uh, tells or Stan what happened, and uh, Stan is deeply, deeply disappointed <laughs> <Right>. in him. <laughs> and then that boots made it for walking songs on again. Do 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 do. You keep telling me I like a UPS girl, and I keep telling you I gotta patrol these sidewalks. <clears throat> Obstruction of sidewalk. Um, so then there was, um, he picks up the newspaper, Hank does, and again, talking about mutual funds for some reason. Yeah. Um, Stan sees a bathroom. He's like, I was at that rest. He sees a restaurant. He's like, my parents took me to that restaurant for my seventh birthday. I've been to that bathroom. He starts jetting over there because, hey. He's like under a, a piss trance. Sure. Because John, or Stan. 316. John 316 says, hey, I've got this information I want to share with you. He completely ignores him and just makes a beeline, or a pee line, if you will, to the bathroom. <laughs> nice. right. um, so he's, he's like, time to piss. He finds out, we look at the newspaper, and it reads that all cops out on Christmas will stay out on patrol. Right. And, and it was it was one of those things where you could see that it was like typed out, like, Typed over the actual like paper, it 
It was just really. It was cheesy. an unnecessarily large headline for what they were communicating. Right, because they're just trying to say, "Hey, this is if this goes if this goes on, this is how the story is going to continue." That's the series. And then uh, during the credits, the mailman has got like a bullhorn. And he's out on the street trying to like direct foot traffic and help and like quote unquote help the police. Right. So he's obviously a character they'd be running into often. Um, that's the end, but definitely not the end of the turbulence. For the turbulence, it's just the beginning. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. <clears throat> the show didn't work. No. The show, to me, does not fall under the category brilliant but canceled. It should be under the category canceled. Uh, completed, canceled. And again, you know, you and I aren't here to bash or tear apart. No, because we, I mean, that's not what we're about. No. Um, we don't just come on here and just say, because that's easy to do. That's hack, right? For sure. Any, like, anyone can hey, take apart something. stupid, eh? Yeah, anyone can say that. We're not those guys. Right. We like to give everything a fair shake. And I feel like we gave B cops a fair, a fair shake. Sure. W- what? Why didn't this work, though? Um, there was no point to it. Like, there was no setting up of, hey, this is a scenario. These are these two guys. There was, it, it was just like, hey, here's two guys we're going to show you on the street. Um, the jokes, again, we talked about it. There wasn't a lot of funny jokes. I mean, there wasn't a lot of well-written stuff. Um, and it's just following these two cops. There was there was no story... Um, there was no story prep for... for yeah. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the great taglines for the show Seinfeld, I, I will mention again, is that it's the show about nothing. Right. And while... That is that's a it's a good hook to pull you in because you're like what's what's a show about nothing what does that mean sure. that might get you interested might might wet your whistle as we're apt to say but Seinfeld really wasn't a show about nothing it was an exaggerated look at day to day mundaneness mm-hmm. you know these little adventures they would go on and how they would intertwine and ultimately screw each other usually oh, yeah. in some fashion and it was masterfully put together this show. Beat Cops really was kind of a show about nothing. Not a lot happened. Something needs to happen. Sure. Not a lot did. And if it, nothing is going to happen, at least be funny. And it wasn't that either. Right. It could be, you know, okay, being a cop is the car that we're putting this show on. Mm-hmm. Within the car, here are the jokes to make the car run. It's not going anywhere. No. This show's not going anywhere. <clears throat> Uh, what would you do to improve it? I would have shown them starting out in the evidence room. I would have saw their chief come over and say, "Hey, you guys are working Christmas, and you're really let's show, let's show their reaction." It really does push it out there, right? Let's right? Let, let's let's show them how lazy and how lackadaisical and how easy they have it. Let's show them how the asshole chief comes in. It's like, you guys are working Christmas. And how it really like disrupts them. Yeah. And then show them go outside and be disrupted. Not just, uh, these two guys went to the academy in 1991. And, oh, guess what? Now they're out. You know. Have a contrast between where they were, where they're comfortable, what they know. Get Let us see what that is. And then whoa, because when they go outside and they're confused right away, we're like, okay, we're confused too. Yeah, we yeah. Let's 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 know why they're confused. Um, and it, you know, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. But this is the part of the show where we have that that luxury to talk about right. about these things. If if it had succeeded, I, I have no doubt in my mind that there's enough fun and action and, and bizarreness and adventure in, the streets in of New York. And, yeah, that 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 right. could support a show. Right, but it's not. It's 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 not one of those man on the street kind of things and that's what this was kind of like this is a man on the streets kind of thing mm-hmm. with no interaction with people it's you know what i mean yeah I, this, it, to me it, it seemed like this was a couple years i believe before reno 911 and reno 911 was it ran for maybe six seasons mm-hmm. i want to say it, yeah. it did actually pretty well yeah. in, in the scheme of, of comedy central shows and that was hey here's eight people eight or so people and you're going to get a couple of them as cops in each scene, and you're going to get a couple of these same cops dressed up as a per- – it was just a constant sketch show with the sure. same kind of theme throughout right. the whole thing. Right. This could have done something similar to that if it wanted to, um, but there was really – There was really there was no hijinks. There wasn't even any – There was no villains. There was no crimes to stop. Right. 
Um, they didn't even chase after a perp. No. Not, nothing Every there. cop show you chase after a perp one time. You got to get after that perp, guys. Oh, get that perp. You got to get after that perp. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. IMDb score. Hit me. Out of 10, 6.2. Wow, six point one. Ooh, ooh, I'm you're right I was, there. I was I was right there. You're I was right there. Straddling success from uh, twenty six reviews. So not a lot of reviews. No, um, more than Mandrake the Magician that we watched uh, last week, but still not very many. Uh, not a lot out there about this. This this is one that was we, we're directing people to watch it in Daily Motion. And when you only go to Daily Motion, I think that dramatically reduces the number of people who have seen it. Right. Because people, all, everyone knows about YouTube. Everyone's on YouTube all we the time. We never heard of day. Daily Motion before we started this show. Case in point. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the only review, viewer or critic, that I found was from Nick Nadell of Screen Crush. And he says, perhaps the humor was too subtle for Fox, or perhaps after Barney Miller, the show, I think a cop show of the 70s, uh, The Job, and countless other shows about funny cops... Fox felt audiences didn't like to mix laughs with shoot 'em ups. Ten years later, the network is trying the guns and guffaws genre again with the Andy Samberg vehicle, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that was a, a you know 2003, still a couple of years after nine eleven. Um, you know, maybe they thought that viewers wouldn't think that cops are supposed to be funny. Like right now. There, you know what I mean. It could just be a, a victim of ill time, too. You're right. Uh, I, I personally do like uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I've only seen a few episodes of Barney Miller, and I think I think I do like Barney Miller. Do you ever watch that? Yeah, I remember watching it when I was younger. Uh, Fish was on there. Was one of the characters. Fish that was the old guy. Okay. And then there was the old Asian guy, and then there was Barney Miller, and like there was only one state. It was just. You know, one was, set. Yeah, there was it could one almost set. be like a play. Right, exactly. It was just it was just one set, maybe two when you go into Barney's office. Mm-hmm. But you know, it was funny. It, it, but it, I was I was young. I probably I probably didn't even get most of the jokes because I was how young I was. But there was there were dramatic elements to that show. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I think that serious serious issues were tackled. That, Racism, that was a show. Yeah, I remember prostitution. Obesity. The obesity. Okay. Yeah. Bestiality was that on there? Oh yes, I remember that episode. Man. What did you say on Puchinski? <laughs> my, my dick. I have a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog. I have a dog penis. Something like that. I'm a, I'm a man, but I have a dog. <laughs> Go listen back to the episode. Fantastic episode. Yeah, Barney Miller is one of those shows that really, for its time, masterfully uh, put together dramatic elements with some comedy, and and, and it did it. And it was it was serious at times. It, and it could be serious. Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine is kind of on the other end of that. Right. Whereas there's very few dramatic elements, but it is a funny show overall. I do enjoy that show. Sure. I wish there were less episodes per season because it kind of drags on a little bit at times. But it is good. I think they do that very well. It is possible, is what we're saying, right? To achieve comedy and a cop action in one show. Sure. Um, this is not that show. Yeah. Sorry to say it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. I definitely didn't know about this before we started. Some, some of these pilots, a few, only a few I heard about. This is definitely not one of them. Not a lot of people, I think, know about B-Cops. Uh, John Benjamin has the luxury of being usually a voice actor. And so people don't know what he looks like a lot right. of times. And a lot of these people fly under the radar, so this is not something people are seeking out. So having not been seen a lot, having been only found on Daily Motion, there's not a lot of information out about this. We, there's not a lot of reviews. There's not a lot of interesting facts. Um, but still, whatever was out there, we had to grasp at, we had to ingest, and we have to turn around and give that a rating based on our scale, 1 to 7, from the classic television show from the 1990s, Wings. 1 being the worst you can get. It's a Roy Biggins. Number 7 being a Brian Hackett. Captain Philip Ressisher, I turn to you. How do you rate Beat Cops? Pachinski, I gave a 3. Mm-hmm. Beat Cops, I'm giving a, a 2. I... It didn't do anything for me. 
I didn't go. I didn't get absorbed in the characters. I didn't think it was necessarily funny. I didn't. I didn't get engulfed in it at all. At least in Puchinski, I knew what was going on. Yeah. I. You know what? More and more, our scores are aligning anymore. I agree with you. This is a two. I wanted to like this. Almost everything John Benjamin is, I do find funny sure. and I enjoy. Sam Cedar, he is a person of note. And we've been through that before. There's been episodes of stuff we've watched. We we were very, very into the, the people in it, and it mm-hmm. just didn't work. And we, we have to separate that. It, 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 we are professionals. And we're doing a great job of it, obviously, because when we can take something that we want to like – and, and give it a, a, a not so great score, sure. even though we like those people, that right. shows that we are we're calling it right down the middle. Right, and that's that's what you got to do when it comes to failed pilots, sky cops. I give them credit though. I give them credit because they were trying something a little different. It was it was a it was a guy obviously kind of with a camera and they had a boom mic and they were just constantly moving around. You don't see a lot of that. A lot of the stuff you see on TV is this, very it, very polished. Right. This was a, an inexpensive pilot. They probably weren't given very much money. And that's another thing when you say you talk about turbulence. I can't say that they probably gave them much money. Fox gave them much money to, to do this. Because sure. it's also a reshoot. Right. You know, the first one had, had characters in it. Like, you know, they were probably inside the police station. Yeah, there may have been some sets built at that point. Right. And this one was no. Here, here's 10 grand. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a bit of a shame. Um, there's a lot of potential with these people. Uh, you know, being in New York at that time, you probably had access to all the great comedians that were living in New York at that time, and they all could have had cycles and runs on the show, but it, it just didn't work out, and I get it. I get why it didn't work out, and I'm sad to say that. But with that, we close the book on Beat Cops, never to be mentioned again, but we're not done. Not by a long shot. Please join us next time, won't you? Would we watch the pilot episode of... Hold on. Can it be... American Nuclear? Ah. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A New York columnist and a mayor- mayoral aide marry and create a blended family with his rebellious daughter and her uptight children. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. Or go to YouTube, and you know what to do, Tube. Just by you reading the summary... Hilarious antics are going to ensue. American nuclear, right? Right. Do you remember that? No. No? Okay. Let me tell you. A long time ago, about a year ago, we said, let's create something new. Let's create something original. Let's create something fun. Couch pilots. Boom. A friendship is forged. A podcast is created forever to change the course of popular culture. Two, three episodes in, we say, well, let's watch the show The Tribe. 1970s, Cro Magnum Man walking around. You uh, watch it. Yeah, I was going to say, let's make sure we clarify it. You didn't watch it. I absolutely did not. <clears throat> and why is that? Because the classically blue link that I had sent all of a sudden disappeared. The video could not be found. A couple months later, this happens again with a little show we call American Nuclear. Oh. Stars a young Mark Ruffalo of current Marvel Universe Hulk fame. That link, gone as well. We were kind of scrambling to get some stuff together Okay, after that. But now, American Nuclear is back, and so are we to watch it and review it next time on Couch Pilots. Um, but until then, check us out at fcfnetwork.com. We've got a whole family of shows. They're all free. You can listen to Sex with Heather, the song Inside and Out, uh, IBWIP, Drunken Lullabies, and the Low Blow podcast out of Chicago. Um, call us. Call us at one, I'm sorry, I keep saying one for some reason, 910, that's 910-PILOTS-1, leave us a voicemail. Definitely do that. Um, we would give extra frequent flyer points to people who call in, because we really like the voicemail option. We love emails. We love seeing people hanging out on Facebook with us and Twitter, um, but we're really trying to get this used more frequently. So The phone number. The phone number. Yeah, all those all those are viable options for sure. They all add up to frequent flyer points, which can get you an array of surprise surprise prizes, a chance to fly with us here on our plane, or even some signed aviator glasses, which I know we're sending out here shortly to one of our lucky frequent flyers. Um, couch pilots at couch pilots podcast at gmail dot com. If you want to send us some uh, digital aviator glasses, if you want to send us some pictures of your boots that were made for walking, we'll yeah, gladly look at yeah, those. Yeah, draw, draw some pictures or something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, about, like, when you're listening to the show, just do some sketches. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? 
Well, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to get frequent flyer points. We're not going to make fun of you. No, we would never do that. Um, yeah, Instagram, couch underscore pilots underscore podcast, and Twitter, couch pilots pod, and Facebook, couch pilots podcast. We're always posting fun stuff there. Ways for you to contact us, reach out, tell a friend about the show. That's how you're going to get the most frequent flyer points from us for, for sure. Uh, Blake, do you have anything else you'd like to mention to our frequent flyers before we go today? Uh, just have a Merry Christmas. We're going to see you the Monday after Christmas, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, spend the time with your children, hug them, you know, and enjoy this festive season. If your grandma starts acting weird, just be cool. By give her a glass of sherry. Yeah. Um, you know, text your friends. Say Mark Christmas. Yeah. Let them know that you care about yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, J- uh, Jason, I'm going to text you and, and wish you a yeah. Merry Christmas. I, and I will do the same because, as we all know, there's an invisible clock over all of our heads, and when that hits zero, it'll be lights out forever. So let the ones you know that you love them. And have a Merry Christmas. Have a happy holiday from here, from us here at happy Couch Happy Kwanzaa. Pilots. Oh, love Kwanzaa. The greatest ho- perhaps the greatest holiday of all. In my book? Yeah. Nothing can be beat. Then Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. Number one with a bullet. Yep. And with that, this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Love you guys. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. We are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.